Bridges. Welcome to Bravo and Please, where we're going to get lit off all the latest going on in the Bravo TV world. This is a safe and uncensored space to discuss our love for everything pop culture and 420 related. So grab your can of goodies and let's get lit. Welcome to Bravo and Blaze with Jenny Blaze, and thank you for being here today. We're in the final stretch of Vanderpump Rules, season 10. This week, the first part of the reunion aired on Bravo, but don't forget, in between each episode of the season, we have podcasts from the cast, we have other podcasts, we have people Instagramming, Twittering. We've got it all, and I've been documenting it all in my Instagram stories on at Bravo and Blaze. Go check it out. And yesterday, we went through everything in my stories from starting from last week, since last week's episode. And if you missed that live stream, make sure you go check it out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Today, we're going to go through the never before scenes of the finale episode <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to go through reun the reunion part one recap. I have my screenshots for you that I'll share with you. And then we're going to go through the pumped up uncensored scenes from Peacock. I just like make a personal decision that I have to just get every single platform because there's different versions out now. And it's like, how do we keep up? So... I got it. I got you. Don't worry. Before I begin, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications so you can be reminded to join us live in the interactive chat and see all the wonderful visuals. Hold up. Let me look at that thumbnail ready to go. Did you just call me an ugly fuck? <laughs> that was kind of maybe my favorite part from this week's episode. But uh, we have our wonderful visuals that I'm sharing over here on YouTube. However, if you are a podcast listener, don't worry because all episodes are available on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and wherever your, whatever your favorite platforms are. <laughs> There's a lot of them now. But subscribing, reviewing, sharing, liking, and leaving a five-star rating is incredibly appreciated and helps this show to continue to grow also, don't forget our social media handle is at Bravo and Blaze on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. TikTok is craving these uncensored scenes. I posted, I started posting yesterday and Instagram stopped me. They said I was posting too much. And then TikTok just like blew up. Everyone is watching all those. So, I mean, it didn't like blow up, blow up, but. Whatever. Anyways, just as a reminder, this is for entertainment purposes only. This is not your source for world news and facts. I'm simply documenting the emotional journey that Scanaval has led me on. And I'm sharing it all with you because I know I'm not alone in this. We're in this together. <laughs> also, I want to make sure that it's clear that although I'm expressing frustration, I am making my opinions that may not feel good for some of these Bravo lebs like Tom Sandoval, who just recently didn't block me, but did something even more Tom Sandoval. Like he must have restricted my account. Like I can still see his Instagram feed, but I can't see his stories, which I think is like, so weird that's not that's like on a different level that's like Craig Conover crazy type of level who also blocked me I've never even talked to him in my life and don't forget I don't tag Tom Sandoval I don't like send him messages I don't like purposely go out of my way to like talk to him but I'm talking about him <laughs> but I just want to make it clear that you know we're just here to express ourselves and we're connecting with each other who, you know, you're disturbed as much as disturbed as I am. <laughs> and, you know, we have to unpack everything that we're witnessing. This is like, think of this as like group therapy, but 
Also, I want to make sure that this is by no means an avenue or vehicle for bullying, meaning I do not condone people trying to hurt the Bravo Lebs in any way, physically attacking, trying to ruin people's lives, sending death, death threats. All of that is completely crossing the line. That's my opinion. We're just here to unpack everything together, collectively. Um, but also, I want to remind you that BravoAndBlaze.com has all sorts of fun, inspired merch and products from all your favorite shows. I have to keep track of things in my scan of all notebook because it's just too much. So I love um, on the back it says for you to die. <laughs> Make sure you get yours at bravoandblaze.com. Also, I think I manifested or witched Mary Cosby coming back to Bravo because I also made this grandfather MF or mug in her honor, and now she's coming back. Is that a coincidence? Maybe, or maybe I'm a witch. But also yesterday I wore my Team Ariana cropped sweatshirt. There's other fun merch. I'm still waiting for my diabolical, demented, subhuman track pants that I'm going to wear to the June 7th reunion part three watch party in New York City. I'm actually, like, nervous about it. Because normally, like, I'm in my own environment watching everything and I'm, like, making content and taking notes. And now I'm going to be, like, in a group setting so I can't, like, do my normal thing. But also, like, what if, who, like, who knows who's going to show up? Like, what if Ariana shows up? <laughs> what if Andy Cohen shows up? Anyways, I'm going to be wearing my pants there. So go check that out on BravoBlaze.com. Also... On my Amazon storefront, I've been tracking all of our necessities, all the things that are helping us get through this Scandival in a Scandival survival kit. I got my, um, I just posted earlier, I've been using my red light therapy lamp and I really believe that it's working. And, you know, Tom Scandival is lucky because... If I didn't have my own ways to cope with this, then, I mean, he's basically setting himself up for a class action. Just saying. Anyways, go check that out. Also, if you still... Oh, by the way, I put paper towels, toilet paper, batteries, pens. They're all in the skin of all survival kit so that this never happens to anyone else ever again. I'm trying to do my part here. But if you need more... Support, we have a Scannable Trauma Bonding um, group on Patreon. And also, if um, you are a content creator, I know there's a lot of us out here, and there really isn't a place for people to get together and, like, compare notes or, you know, like, support each other because, you know, I support other women and thems and some men. But um, I have a content creation behind the scenes Patreon tier where you can come and see how I've done everything with Bravo and Blaze, starting from the bottom, just live tweeting during shows with a bunch of kids at home during the pandemic, and now we're here. But anyways, let's move on. I'm going to share my screen. We're doing Vanderpump Rules, the never before scenes from the finale, the reunion part one recap, and then the pumped up version. Speaking of annoying, Tom Sandoval has been out doing his shows and God bless our other fellow Bravo content creators because they are taking one for the team, going to the shows and scoping out what he's doing. I watched um, a clip from the Bravo Babe went and he changed the words to the Schwartz's mom song and he said something like, your mom wants to fuck me or whatever. It's just really inappropriate and gross and I wish he would stop doing that because it's not cool. Like, it's gross. I don't know why this, like, idea of having sex with your friend's mom is, like, some kind of, like, macho, like, award or something. It's gross. And that's what we're going to change. That's what Scandival 
is going to bring. The silver lining of Scandival is that going forward, we are not going to allow men to get away with their sexual deviance anymore. Like, I have, go on my Instagram reels, I have clips of Schwartz and Raquel talking about being like brother and sister, and then you see Sandoval, Schwartz, and Jack singing a song like, I should know better than kissing my sister or something. It's just like, gross. And then during my rewatch, there was one season, it was during, I think, before the the book, I think it was like a publisher or someone, it was a professional setting, it was Ariana and this other woman who's a professional, and they're talking about, they're preparing for whatever their next business meeting is, and he goes, I got an idea, if that doesn't work, and he pulled down his pants, and he goes, you could just, I could just go there and do this, and it was mortifying. Ariana was like, this is the most embarrassing thing ever. Please pull up your pants. And the other woman that was there was just like, and that is what is not appropriate in this day and age anymore. So Sandoval, thanks for teaching us all. That's a silver lining. You're not going to get away with it anymore. Boom, boom. Okay, let me get on track here. Okay, yeah, I'm sharing my... My screen, we're on Instagram. I'm gonna go through the never before scenes from the finale episode. If you, I don't know if you're, if you're not in the US, you don't have cable, cause I think you have to have cable to have Bravo, like the cable network and see when they actually air things. You can watch it on bravotv.com, I think, but you also still need a cable subscription. But anyways, Aside from that, Peacock is a separate streaming service that you also have to pay for. So keep that in mind because before a new episode, what Bravo has been doing is they have never before seen episodes from the week prior. So last week we saw the finale, but this week before they showed the reunion part one, they showed the never before scenes of the finale. And normally there's like four never before scenes that are spread out in a normal episode but I think because this was the like second finale that they did they had they I don't think they had as much so for this one they only had three never before scenes and they were very very short I just want to preface that um the first one is when Tom and Ariana were talking Ariana mentions the Abby and she goes you know, why wasn't I invited? And she's like, you guys went together. And she was, because she was trying to mention, remind him that like, I was defending you even when you guys went to the Abbey together. And, you know, why wasn't I invited? Because you knew you wanted to beep her. He's like, no. I think it, it is the reason why. But the second never before scene is... Tom Sandoval going to see Raquel and he goes, you know, I was just at my house and hold on, let me flip this back and start over. I just went by my house and it's like my driveway is like all blocked off. Why? Because so many people are visiting Ariana. Yeah, that's good. She has some support. But I was also like kind of annoyed because I was never allowed to have parties at our house. She like fought me with on like having people over on my birthday. And Raquel even rolled her eyes. This man is so out of touch with reality. He is comparing Ariana's support group to help her grieve as a party like his birthday. Also, let's not forget, we've seen on the show that they have parties. So what is he talking about? This is so ridiculous. I can't stand him. <laughs> so then um the third never before scene is with Tom and our or Tom and Shayna in that last scene together and she mentions, you know, I even thought back then they flip back to 2000 what is this? 2013. She goes, "I'm just saying I felt that way about you back then." 
and it caused a rift between her and I. The conversation I had with her mom about you, how selfish you were, and how you always put yourself before her. Then they flash back. This is 2015. Shayna had texted Ariana's mom. I don't know if Shayna made the initial contact or if Ariana's mom was checking in on, you know, her daughter. But she um, essentially was like, she just <laughs> said what she said. I said what I said. And she stand, she stood by it. She was like, yeah, I stand by it. And he was like, that's messed up. But she put it aside just to like, she didn't want to lose her friendship with Ariana. So not there wasn't that much that we got from, you know, the never before scenes. But I'm going to switch gears now to screenshots of the reunion. We're going to walk through them. I try not to take too many screenshots because um, it's the reunion and like, it's not like they're, we have to watch them in the same outfits <laughs> for like three weeks. More than that probably. And not that they don't look amazing, which by the way, they all look amazing except for Tom Sandoval and Tom Shorts. But um, yeah, it's like, Kind of stagnant as far as visually. All right, let me share my screen. All right, reunion part one. Here we go. In a reunion first, Andy sat down separately with the principals of the scandal to hear their sides of this of the story, meaning obviously Tom, Ariana, and Raquel. For Tom Sandoval, it was one final chance to come clean. For Ariana, it was a moment to share her experience. And then you see Andy asks, what's your current living status with Tom? Then you see him with Raquel, who's wearing a blazer. <laughs> like, a, like a business suit blazer. Weird, but anyways. For Raquel, it was a chance to explain how it all happened. But more on that later. I think she's going to be the one to make the big reveal. I'm, a little, I'm nervous for two reasons. One, I'm nervous it's really going to like shake me to my core and I'm going to be really upset. Or I'm nervous that it's going to be so lame that it's been hyped up all this much and then it turns out being lame and then I'm going to be really disappointed. So bravo if you're listening. I doubt it, but <laughs> okay. So we see Andy sit down with Ariana, Tom, Raquel. He asks Ariana, have you seen or spoken to Raquel? She said that it took 48 hours for her to even text. And I guess Ariana had already texted her, you are dead to me. And then when Raquel finally did text her, she said, Ariana, I don't know what to say right now besides I really effed up and I am so 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 sorry and Ariana Ariana said shut the f up you effing rat and then she blocked her <laughs> so then Andy asked Tom you know when did you know that you had feelings for Raquel and he says the beginning of the year I'm thinking that in that translates to the beginning of 2022 which means that Coachella blind item we haven't gotten confirmation, but I feel like now it's really like we're getting more circumstantial evidence that is supporting that that was maybe in fact a true blind item. Because don't forget later on, we're going to hear um, what happened at Coachella. They were in the hot tub together. And yes, when did you first hook up? And Tom said essentially it was that night. After the Abbey, after a guy's night, that's like their story that they're sticking with right now. And Andy's just being very clear. He's like, you had sex that night. And he says yes. So he admitted to having sex that night. But I think they were having sex way before that. And if not actual sex, like at least an emotional affair of some degree. And probably sexually inappropriate, like, sexting or something. 
Um, Ari- he asked Ariana, were you suspicious that something was going on? She was like, absolutely not. And he asked, when you were glamping for Raquel's birthday, were you guys together? And he said, no, we had like that first time, which by the way, looking at what Tom Sandoval actually says when it's written out in captions, you can really see how like pathological this guy is. Um, And that really maybe he needs to work on his communication skills because he does a lot of roundabout like you need to be very clear when you communicate to people and especially like in this environment and with his restaurant oh my god we'll get there but he's insinuating that like they had a hookup then they took a break they were on a break and and he's like when did it kick back up again and i guess it's called like life is beautiful or whatever some music festival which is in september 2022 when i first saw this picture when scanval broke back in march i didn't realize this was september 2022 i thought this was coachella and i was like using this as fuel for my assumption that you know like tom sandoval uses coachella as his like predator playground But then I found out this wasn't Coachella, so I was like, oh, because if you've been following since the beginning, I've been on a roller coaster where I heard that blind item, but then I thought for some reason that like, oh, that's not real. I thought somebody like made a joke about it. And then when I talked to Ryan Bailey, he was like, I don't think that's true. I was with them. I saw them. Him and Ariana looked like they were so in love and whatever, which I bet they were. They probably did. But... I took that as, because Ryan felt like nothing happened, I was like, uh, that must be the case. But now it's all coming back. And so now I'm spiraling again, like, oh my God, Coachella. Because I told TMZ, (laughs) I told TMZ that he should be banned for life, that he's a serial Coachella predator. Um, Then Andy mentions BravoCon. So I was with, I was not at this concert. I actually deliberately did not go, kind of like um, Katie. (laughs) Um, I was actually, that night, I was already at the Gansevoort and eating with Bravo Breaking News. Love her. And um, that's the night that Jennifer Aiden and Melissa Gorga got into it. I saw Jennifer Aiden. I saw the Gorgas. I also saw, like, Like, pretty much we saw everybody. And, um, but I guess every, there were some people at the concert, but I heard it was kind of empty because people were texting us who were there and they were like, it's kind of (laughs) boring. So I was like, I'm glad that I didn't go to that. But during that, look, there's a picture of Raquel and, oh my God, I just noticed something. And this picture, look at the direction he's facing. Like, If you get close, his body language is facing Raquel. Raquel's looking at him. Ariana's looking back. I'm disturbed. I'm disturbed. This is awful, awful, awful. Oh, my God. And Andy asks, like, did you get off on that? And he's like, no, my God, no. Yeah, right. You probably did. He's... He did. I bet he did. I believe it. Then, you know, he asked, Andy asked Ariana, do you think now, looking back, are there situations that you feel like maybe were warning signs? She's like, yeah, um, now looking back, she said more so with Raquel than than Tom because, as we all know, men are trash. <laughs> She's like, no offense. And Andy was even like, I'm going to co-sign it. And I feel like if you ask any guy, they'll be like, yeah, men are trash. (laughs) So we need to just be more open about that because let's evolve. We, We are not animals. We should be able to control our bodies, right? And I think we should praise more men who are able to control themselves versus 
like high fiving guys because they got laid, but then, you know, like slut shaming women. Like this is, we need to change things. That's part of the silver lining of Scandaval. What's coming out of Scandaval? For you to die. Die? You know who's dying? Old Boys Club. We're not, we're not keeping your secrets anymore. We're going to out you, pervs. <laughs> Moving on. Um, but then Ariane, this was so sad. She's like, you know, I kind of expect guys to like do that or whatever. Um, yes, near nothing. He can't help it. He's a man is not an excuse. Yes, absolutely. Um, and Ariana's like, you know, men are trash, but my girlfriends, I trust my girlfriends that they wouldn't do that. And she's like, how could someone be as close to me as she did, you know? And with a guy, she almost expects that to happen or whatever. And Andy asks Tom, you know, like, how did this come about, cheating on your girlfriend of nine years? And Tom, in his Tom way, he just starts going into, like, he doesn't, he doesn't answer anything clearly. He just does this roundabout. Him and Schwartz do it. Instead of just answering the question, which actually, when, she, when Ariana and him were sitting down in the finale and she goes, when are you going to see her next? And he said, tomorrow, like that, like real quick. That is clear communication. And that annoyed me in that, in that scene because I'm like, he's so quick to be clear and concise and direct with that information. But ask him any other question in the world and it's like what Greg says. A word salad. And it's just so annoying. Like, we know what you're doing. <laughs> you're on camera. You cannot get away with these things anymore. This is not happening. Oh, my God. The audacity. <sighs> so he just goes, oh, we had issues, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He goes, I, this was weird. I felt like I was like her gay BFF. Actually, isn't Logan her gay BFF? <laughs> like, how, why is he saying this? What does that mean? It's this, like, there's, like, undertones of something going on here. Like, I don't know. I didn't like that. But he says, we put on a front when we were filming. Then he brings up the showrunner, Jeremiah, producer Jerry. And he says, to so, again, he's like, oh, I even told Jeremiah he's putting the ownership of this responsibility onto the showrunner Jeremiah saying you know like I told him but then when we see the footage from September 2022 which I'm sure Jerry made sure that went in and was like he never told me shit <laughs> so don't even try to throw me under the bus but in this scene the unseen footage he goes I feel guilty when people put themselves out there, man, you know, like, it's not fair. I feel like it's important for us to, like, talk about this shit, not pretend like it's all amazing. There may have been more conversations taking place with Jeremiah, but I don't know. It just, That seems very Sandoval-like to just talk in circles and be like, oh, I, I tried, I didn't, or whatever he says. He even says, like, for us to, like, have these issues, I just didn't think it was fair for the rest of the cast. <sighs> then Andy asks Ariana, were there elements of your relationship that you were um, hiding? And she said, from my point of view, like, I put it all out there. He's framing it now as, like, something else because he has to. He's desperate. He will throw anything at the wall right now because he's the one who used to tell me he coached me on this same way he's coaching Rachel. And Andy's like, what do you think he's telling her? <laughs> Got to get their lies right. Got to get their story right. Their spin on whatever it is. So go back to the finale. Remember when Tom was talking to Schwartz and he goes, I tried, I tried. But, you know, like I had to make sure that Raquel and I were on the same page. And I even said when we watched it the first time, I'm like, what the hell does that mean? Like, why wouldn't you be on the same page? I thought you are having a seven-month-long affair. Like, what, how is there any, even, 
possibility that you're on a different page. So it's just, yeah, the witchy senses are going off. And don't forget, back in the day, men used to call women with intuition or like basically people who could smell out the bullshit. They called them witches and they burned them at the stake because they were threatened by them when really like we just get it like we hear what you're saying we're not stupid um andy asks how do you feel about seeing everybody at the reunion he says i'm nervous i'm scared but i'm ready to face it um shannon and ariana obviously look amazing everyone looks amazing i already said that um except for the toms and i feel bad they're like i've lost like probably five pounds last two weeks just from scan of all i am like the opposite i think i gained like five pounds in the first week <laughs> these girls are like i don't eat yeah right i'm over here trying to lose my scan of all weight um then we see andy and it's so funny because like i remember the day that they filmed the reunion and i was like live streaming that day and then we see, you know, Andy doing, he always does like some stories and stuff like that. He asks Schwartz, were you silent or were you silenced? And Tom says the answer is both. Side note, I am really, really hoping that Winter House is all about Scannaval. Because let's not forget Tom Schwartz, Scannaval already happened. It like was out there. Then Schwartz goes to Winter House. I'm sure they all know. They're probably like, hi, what's going on with you? And then he, I'm hoping that they like coach him through and they're like, you know, you really shouldn't protect him. If you know the truth, you really should tell. And because then he flies out to film this reunion while he, while Winter House is still going on, he goes just to do the reunion he obviously gives a different timeline than what Sandoval said to him or whatever. And I'm hoping that Schwartz goes back to Winter House. They finish filming and they're like high-fiving each other like, yeah, you stood up to him. And I don't know. I just, I'm manifesting. I mean, I can't manifest it because it already happened. But I'm just, I really want that to be me you know how it turns out but you know they show them all walking out getting ready to go out then the last person to show up is tom sandoval they're like he's coming he's coming and i couldn't help myself i'm just like oh my god dead man walking this is so good uh near nothing said when did winter house film so the reunion was filmed march 23rd 20 days after scannaval broke and so I think they were filming the week before, maybe like March 17th-ish, maybe around St. Patrick's Day. And then I think a week after too. But oh my gosh, this just when he's coming out, it was very tense. So Andy reminds everyone, he's saying, you know, hi, welcome everyone, you look amazing. Um, Raquel is not there because she's legally not allowed to because she's the one who um, filed a temporary restraining order. So I actually, in the beginning, I thought like she was going to be there and Shayna would have to not be there. But I find it interesting that they're like, no, you stay over there. <laughs> And then Shayna will come out on the stage. So I, I, I'm i glad they did that. But I just, for some reason, wasn't thinking like that. Um, <laughs> Shayna the gangster. Oh, my gosh. Every single time they show, they cut to the trailer, Raquel's trailer, 100 yards away from Shayna, it just made me laugh so hard. Because literally she could be like, She's probably so mad that she got the restraining order because I think this girl is fame hungry or whatever. Like she wants to be on screen. So she probably feels left out in this moment. And she's probably like, I really wish my parents didn't make me get that restraining order or whatever. I don't know. Um, but they said she'll join later. 
So Andy's like, James, since most of the women are all mad at the Toms, does that make you the number one guy in the group? And he says, you know, well, it's not hard to compete with Schwartz and a clown. Then, oh, this part annoyed me. Andy's doing small talk. He's like to Shayna, are you and Brock still in the honeymoon phase? She's like, yeah, he just cut his hair. And Tom Sandoval, this is his first like interaction after coming out. And he's like, we did? Oh, my God. And, like It was so odd to me. Like, why? I don't know. Weird, 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 weird. Oh, sorry. I said the wrong date. The reunion was not filmed on the 23rd. It was the 20th? What was the 23rd? Maybe the 20th? No, because the, they filmed the reunion, and then Sheena had her court appearance like the next day or something. Maybe it was the 20th and the 21st. Where did I get the 23rd? Whatever. Anyways, so going back to this, I just thought it was so weird that he was like acting like everything was okay. Oh, whoops. She said no winter house ended on <laughs> March 20th. Oh, so maybe, maybe they were hyping him up before the reunion and we get to see all that. Whatever. Either way, he's on Winter House during Scandal. So I hope we get to see it all. Um, so Andy tries to ask, what's everyone what is on everyone's mind today? Scandal and Raquel's affair that happened right underneath everyone's noses. They clip they cut to so many different scenes where people are asking about like their relationship, and it's so apparent. Um Oh my gosh. And then Raquel sitting there like this. She's just like, I don't know if she's trying to look like she's just like a little girl. Like, the, I feel like this is how my daughters would act when they're like trying to look cute or whatever. And my daughters are three and four. And I have the other ones too, but whatever. Anyways. <laughs> so. And he asks Tom, is there anything you want to say to Ariana or the group at large? And he starts right away with the, <laughs> he's like, um, I just, uh, uh, want to thank everybody as if he's like accepting an award. Like, I'd like to thank God. Thank you, everybody. And I don't believe that this was real for a second because when they, they just went in on him james goes pull yourself together man this isn't a fucking extra <laughs> knock it off they're they just go in on him knock it off knock it off <laughs> you're not at the academy awards he's like i'm not a victim and the way that like <laughs> is making fun of tom and lisa just like james stop it it's like, be a man, mate, be a man. Pull yourself together, fucking crocodile tears. Pussy. <laughs> James is just so good. I love him. Oh, my God. But the way that, like, when they went in on him, Tom, it was like flipping a switch, which was gross to me. Like, that he could just be like, thank you, and then be like, you know, like, mad when they start going in on him. It's weird to me. But he says he appreciates everybody being there for Ariana, blah, blah, blah. I'm not even going to like. He says she didn't deserve it. Obviously, we know that. He's like, uh, nobody deserves to have that happen. Yesterday, I went through a proper apology and the seven pieces to a proper apology. You can go watch the explained episode on apologies on Netflix because I had Tom Sandoval in mind when I was watching it and I'm like he does he doesn't do these things and then they even gave the warning signs like what people often do instead of giving a proper apology they deflect they you know make light of it or they overreact and they're like <laughs> when really they're just like they're not that sad <laughs> which reminds me of Jack's yelling to Brittany after he cheated on her. You're not that devastated. <laughs> in that context, it was totally inappropriate. But in this context, I feel like it is appropriate. 
And he's like, nobody deserves that to be happened to them or whatever. She goes, nothing happened. You did it. Mofo. He says, I'm sorry for doing the one thing I said I wouldn't do, and I did it in the worst way possible. Ugh, cut to her. <laughs> Every time they cut to her, I'm just like, oh, my God, this is too funny. He says, I love you, and I apologize. I'm sorry, but aren't you supposed to be in love with somebody else right now? I'm confused. Why is he saying whatever? And I just love James and Lala. They're like banter back and forth. He's James like, that didn't hit for me. <laughs> goes, I didn't even listen. And Ariana says, I think he's fucking full of shit. And I don't believe a word he says. He can fuck off, whatever. And he asks, are you, you know, to Tom, are you still living in the house? He says, uh, on and off. Whatever that means. Um, then Andy goes to Lala, like, when you and Randall broke up, you know, you got out of there immediately. Do you think it's healthy for these two to live there together? And she's like, no, absolutely not. Then she just starts going into Sandoval. He's basically Randall Emmett in 10 years. There are so many, after listening to the Call Her Daddy podcast, it's a two-hour-long two podcast. I kind of briefly recapped it yesterday on yesterday's live stream. But after hearing that, and knowing that Tom Sandoval would have Raquel, like he would fly her out to where he was traveling to so they could be together. And then if he had to like charge something, he would use other people's names or like that is a Randall move. And we learned that from the Randall scandal this week on Hulu. So he basically is like Randall. Ugh. And it was weird that Lala says when she was with Randall, she couldn't get him to stay home. But then when everything blew up, she couldn't get him to leave the house, which is weird. And she goes, that is an effing narcissist. Side note, I already have a recording scheduled with an expert, amazing expert on narcissism. That episode will be coming soon. But... Um, cause I feel like I need to learn more about this word since we, I jokingly say like narcissism is part of my brand, but I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't say that cause I don't even really know what that means, but I'm also like kind of making fun of the word and the fact that people throw it around all the place very loosely. So I want to know what a true narcissist really is. And this expert is gonna, we're going to talk about Tom Sandoval and his behavior, but whatever Lala has learn from her research on narcissism she says everyone needs to be warned about this person talking about tom sandoval saying that he is a narcissist and that he is a dangerous human being and then uh lisa like sticks up for tom she's like that's actually a ridiculous thing she's like i didn't ask for anyone's opinion that, that's lala she's like well you have my opinion and lala's like well that's great i reject it <laughs> Then she goes into how, you know, Tom was sleeping next to Ariana. That was his life partner. There's something wrong with this person if he can lie straight to her face like that. And Lisa's like, yeah, well, other people have done it. And Lala's like, yeah, and they're they're dangerous people too. And I had a baby with one. His name is Randall Emmett slash Randall Ives. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We need to talk about that more too because – I, if he starts using Randall Ives, we have to blow up that hashtag. He is not going to get away with this. You can't just change your name and be like, I didn't like con everybody in the world. No, it doesn't work that way. But then they just start going after each other. And I have to say, I really enjoyed watching Lala just yell nonsense to Tom Sandoval. This is when I like Lala's character and how she handles these situations when she pops off. <laughs> like, when it's done at the appropriate time, it is very satisfying to watch. But Lisa's like, calm down. And Lala was just like, no, I'm not going to calm down. And I don't know why Lisa said, like, we're here for 10 hours, for God's sakes. And Lala's like, we're ready and we're ready to go. I felt that in that moment. I was like, me too. Let's go. 
So Andy says to Ariana, you know, you talked a lot about having quality time together with Tom. Do you think that is what caused the divide in the relationship? And Ariana is like, no, he caused the divide because he was fucking other people. And it's all his fault. And then Andy asks Sandoval, what do you think caused the divide or whatever? And he goes, just slowly over time, our communication, our connection just slowly just kind of dissipated. Yeah, because you didn't put any effort in, you dumb. Oops, not supposed to say that word. D and S. Wait, maybe he has D and S. I shouldn't say that. I don't know. <laughs> but he's just, again, going around in circles with his words, not being clear like, you know what? I just lost interest. I want to have a fun, exciting life where I play in my band and I go out, get drunk, and have sex with different women because it's not really socially acceptable, as it rightfully so, but also don't have a person at home that you're completely lying to and deceiving along the way. Just live that life if you want. Be honest about it. There, there's more respect in that than someone who tries to pretend that they're somebody else. Like, if you are a scumbag, a dirtbag, just own it. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. Then, oh, I like this part. So then um, Andy goes, Ariana, Thomas said that you hadn't been intimate in years and that you were kind of glorified roommates. And she says, that's not true. We had been intimate. Also, having intimacy issues does not excuse any fucking thing. Yes, I stand with her. It, and it's victim blaming. Yeah, it really is. Like, just because, like, if you're having intimacy issues, you need to work on that. You don't just, like, Somebody said in the comments, it's not the, he can't help it, he's a man. Like, fuck that. He's not an animal. He's a human being. And we are evolved, an, an evolved species that can actually use our brain and not be like animals, like wild animals. So, ugh, God, I hate men right now. <laughs> she says, it's disgusting. Okay, and then Annie says, did the rest of the group sense there were significant issues in this relationship? Shorts did, obviously, because he knew about it the whole time. Shana, did you? She said um, she didn't know really until Lala mentioned it to her. And she sat down with Ariana, brought it to Ariana's attention. And from the sounds of it from Ariana, everything was great. They had been very intimate that month, meaning I'm guessing they had sex that month. That their communication was better. Look at Raquel's face here, okay? Because in the next screenshot it says, this was in January. When, so go back to her face. I truly think that this girl just realized in this moment that her lover had been lying to her. She He probably told her, oh, we haven't had sex since before the night at Mondrian or whatever, some bullshit. And she's like, because don't forget, in that first finale episode, during that something about her party, she goes in, I think she was fishing to see, like, are how's your sex life? Which is just so crazy to ask, like, your lover's girlfriend how their sex life is. And I really think she was trying to fish to see if, like, I think from what we saw on the show, it seemed like she got enough about or enough to believe that they weren't having sex and that Tom wasn't cheating on her. <laughs> and I know I'm being facetious. Like, obviously, you can't cheat on your mistress. But like, I really think this is the moment that she's like, oh, fuck, he's been fucking her since January. So, yeah. So then they, Andy asks, with your relationship with Raquel, why not come clean to Ariana? And then James is just so hyped. He's like, and to your friends, you remember who I am, Tom? And it, right away, this is where Tom chooses. He's very selective in when he wants to be clear 
and direct with his communication, right away he says, yeah, you're James motherfucking Kennedy. And the way he said it was in a way that was like, yeah, like we're friends kind of thing. But then James is like, um, he's just all worked up and Lisa's trying to say, you know, I think this is, you know, Ariana's a little more important, but Ariana was like, no, you know, like they were like brothers. And then that's when Tom like kind of, again, it's like a switch that he's able to flip on and off where he's like, yeah, you're James motherfucking Kennedy. And then bloop, <laughs> like, oh, James is still mad at me. So now I'm going to go in defense mode. And he goes, because Ariana says we were like, or they were like brothers. And James confirmed it. He's like, yeah, we were like brothers. And Tom, that's when he, after he flipped the switch, was like, we didn't even talk like even once a month or, you know, whatever. And that's what, you know, like threw gasoline on the fire because he's like, what? And then there's reminding everyone, like, don't forget Raquel was his fiance. They had the Rachella thing. Tom paid for part of the engagement. And then they clipped to scenes of him dishing out like 3000 1000 whatever. He spent money. And James is like, you've been a big bro, dude. He's like, that's what you call me. Or Tom says, that's what you called me. Yes, as in a matter of fact, like, that might be what you think and lala's like oh, ready to explode she's got her hands up like no this man did not just do this right now and he's like what that's what you call me and tom's like no i did not like <laughs> this is the level of maturity that tom sandoval has where like shana says when they were in the that night march 3rd Tom Sandoval was saying to Shana, like, you're not my best friend or something. And literally, I am not joking. My four-year-old says that. My four-year-old says, you're not my best friend anymore if, like, you don't agree with her on something. And this is, like, this man's maturity level is just, I mean, I'm not saying James' maturity level is any better, but Tom's the one who is in the wrong here. He needs to, like, not just act like a little brat. And that's all he's doing. But then he's, like, you know, saying, then he calls Tom, James calls Tom an opportunist. And that's when Tom brings up Kristen and how James used Kristen to get on the show. And then he starts talking about how they he was having sex with her right after like right after they broke up so they were broken up and then he started james and kristen started getting together but don't forget tom was already like basically in a relationship with ariana at this point so why did why would he even care that why would he even care that james starts sleeping with kristen if he's already done with kristen and like couldn't break up with her and like it was so hard to get her away the logic doesn't make sense. And what it leads me to believe is that Tom, even though he's got, he can only have one committed relationship. It's like he wanted Ariana as his girlfriend, didn't, did or didn't want Kristen as his girlfriend. But either way, no one, none of his friends are allowed to hook up with her. It makes no sense. It's just wild but obviously he's still harping on it we're 10 years later or whatever how many years later and he's going and you use my condoms like he's still really pissed about this and he also brought it up during that beach party or beach day whatever when james threw his drink in, in schwartz's face so james gets in his face it's like they're about to go throw down tom's like this <laughs> And James is just going off. Raquel, they cut to Raquel. She's smiling, guys. She literally was smiling. I don't know if it was a nervous laugh, but it was disturbing to me. You know, this is when Andy's like, my guards. And they're still, <laughs> oh, my God. And then Tom even starts yelling more. He says, we're, we were supposed to move in together. So he's mad that 
See, this is, oh my gosh, this is more proof. This is all unfolding right now as I'm speaking. This is where Tom Sandoval also has this weird expectation of his guy friends, similar to Schwartz. I really, I actually feel like Tom Sandoval may have thought that James was going to be his new replacement for Schwartz since Schwartz was moving on with Katie, living together with her, and about to get married. Oh my God. He has some weird, like, ownership over people or something. This is deep, deep trauma. We need to, we need that expert in here soon. Oh, man. He's, and he says, James, I stood up for you. Why, why is that part of the argument after you just said all these things? Like, oh, you did this. And that. Oh, I stood up for you. Like, what does that have anything to do with anything? <laughs> I love how James is like, your band sucks dick. You're a nothing. You're a nobody. You're a loser. You're and your fucking bar is going down the drain, you backstabbing hoe. And then he goes, get in my face again. I'll fuck you up, motherfucker. James like, come on, I will fuck you up right now, bitch. I will fuck you up so quickly. <laughs> Look at me, bro. I guess James was shaking. I will beat his ass. You actually won't stay in the chair. He said it first, pussy bitch. He like walks off the stage. This was also where, oh, this is when he says, you're wrong with a mustache. Ugly fucking word. You call yourself an artist? Oh, burn. <laughs> Tom Sandoval's comeback is, you've had the same haircut for nine years. How is that? He really thought he was doing something there? Like, James looks amazing. I, I'll keep this hair for nine years. I don't care. And James is so funny. He's like, and it works for me, bro. <laughs> Fucking worm. That, I didn't get this part. Tom goes, James pees on a fire hydrant like a dog, and that's his fire hydrant. What the hell is he talking about? Sino, Instagram, come over to YouTube because I it's going to cut off in like one minute. It cuts off after an hour. Sorry. Blame Instagram. It's not my fault. <laughs> that was a bad apology. Um, okay, so this is where they're like, dude, the stakes were higher. Can you say, keep up, Sandoval? But then, again, Andy tries to ask the question, why not come clean to Ariana right then? Then James comes back in and, like, use your words and, you know, trying to get him to settle down. And Raquel's like, I want him to answer this question too. Like, that says a lot right there because – she should already know this answer, right? Like, what was he telling her all along? Man, this is... I'm scared. She's told... If she doesn't turn on him in the end, then I don't know if there's any redemption for her. But, um, yeah, so James comes back. He says, Tweedledee and tweet a little dick. And Schwartz is like, am I Tweedledee? But um, then he's like, you ugly fuck <laughs> whatever this is the best part and he's like did you just call me an ugly fuck <gasps> he's like no you're handsome oh okay um <laughs> calls him james is so funny he's just like calling him a shithead or whatever lisa's like you will be in your dressing room you won't be on stage that's when james is like oh, i'm gonna go for a time out I'm going to get a spank bottom, Andy, at lunchtime. Lisa, I got a spank bottom. He's so funny. So again, Sandoval, why not come clean? He said, I was obviously scared to. I need him to elaborate on that. What exactly were you scared of? Were you scared of being alone? Were you scared of learning that your dream of being this cover band with getting drunk every night and having fangirls is actually really lame and very, very basic of you. What are you scared of? Certainly you're not physically afraid of this woman attacking you. <laughs> 
but he's like, a lot of things were going on with her. I didn't want to add to anything. Um, so then Andy asked Schwartz, million dollar question. When did Sandoval tell you that he hooked up with Raquel? And Schwartz can't give a straight answer, of course. He goes, you know, starting in July, you know, he started to confide in me. And she go, and Ariana, Ariana was like, when Charlotte's body wasn't even fucking cold, by the way. And Katie's like, by confided in her, you mean put his penis in her? <laughs> then they're like, when did you find out that they're fucking, dude? Get to it. And he goes, whatever. Okay, late August. He told, and then he starts going around in his word salad again. And Tom Sandoval goes, late August? Because he obviously, he's like, yeah, you told me late August after the wedding. <laughs> They're looking at each other like, this. they definitely were not on the same page with their stories. And then you, they cut to Andy interviewing Tom Sandoval in the one-on-one, -on -one and he goes, when did you tell Schwartz that you and Raquel had hooked up? And Tom Sandoval said, mid-late January. So, at least, logic tells us that at least one person is lying, but with these two, I have a feeling they're both lying. And then Ariana's like, oh, you didn't get to coach him because you were coaching the rat all day yesterday. And he's like, oh my gosh. And then you see Raquel like, I think this is when she's realizing like, oh my God, our timelines are getting messed up because Sandoval's a mastermind, don't forget. He's probably coaching, he's got to coach all of his pawns, right? These are all pawns to him. If he is a, what I think a narcissist is, like, you don't look at people as, like, human beings. They're just, like, whatever they, they're a source of something that needs to feed your ego or something. So I think she may be realizing, like, oh, shit, this is, this timeline, a story that we planned out is not going to work. Um, but then Andy asks, that conversation by the bagel truck one week after Shayna's wedding, you said that you think that Raquel has a crush on someone else. He goes, were you talking about him? And Schwartz said, honestly, yeah. <laughs> Subconsciously. Yeah, right. He goes, I, you told me that day. I think it was the 31st. And I know because we went and got drunk in your hot tub afterwards. The, and look at Sandoval's face. He's got his eyes closed like, this is, this is not what we went over. <laughs> I really think this is Tom in real time, like, just so disappointed that his plan isn't working. And he's closing his eyes like, oh, God, here we go. He goes, oh, he's like, I had a one night stand with Raquel. Never again, mistake, alcohol, the whole spiel people do when they have a one night stand. Let's just pause for a second. What is the whole spiel that people do when they have a one night stand? And what does one night stand mean to Schwartz and Sandoval? Because I don't think it's a one night, like... I guess you could have a one night stand when you're in a committed relationship, but you can't have a one night stand with like someone in your friend group and say it's a one night stand. Can you? I don't know. I don't like it. But he says it like the whole spiel people do when they have a one night stand as if he is an expert on one night stands, which I guess he is because that's what he used to do to Katie, right? And he goes, um, and after that, things kind of went back to normal. Pause again. I'm sorry, but how do you go back to normal after you find out your friend, your best friend and business partner, that you put your entire life savings, you lost your house, you lost your mortgage, you, you're going to put... <laughs> how, does, how do things go back to normal when that person that you've relied on just cheated on the your other friend 
who was a groomsman in your wedding. Things cannot go back to normal. That's the thing. And that's the part where I'm like, Schwartz, ugh, you can't go back to normal after that. So then um, somebody asked, was this conversation before glamping? Because remember, in September 2022, they went glamping for Raquel's birthday. Schwartz knew and still made that joke about Raquel having a type being men that are taken. And even Katie said it too. Later on, she's like, that's like dark. That's some dark shit. <laughs> it really is. Like he knew about this and he asked. Like they're having inside jokes about this affair at this point. Like that's how gross it is. And then they start asking about, you know, Sandoval encouraging Schwartz to make out with Raquel. Like, why would you do that if you two already had sex? He's like, and then he said, was that a decoy or a smoke screen? And he's like, absolutely not. <laughs> when that happened, it was like, that can never effing happen again. In Schwartz, I don't know. Like, he's not making any sense. And Lisa even says, yeah, but it's macabre. It's perverse to encourage your best friend to make out with somebody that you've just slept with. And he says, I don't think so. What? I'm sorry. I don't even like the idea of somebody I don't even like. <laughs> but if it's another girl's man, I am never even going to think, like, even if they're done, I'm like, done. No, 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 no. I just think this is so weird that he thinks that that's normal. And this is where I'm saying this perverse, this deviant sexual behavior from men should no longer be accepted. Katie says, I think it was a great excuse for Sandoval and Raquel to spend time together and be like, don't look over here, look over there. And I think she's absolutely right. <sighs> They asked Sandoval, you've been saying that you started cheating on Ariana because of how bad things were in the relationship, but Miami girl was so early in your relationship. Cut back to 2014, people. That's why this Sandoval is such a big deal. We've been watching this for nine years. Miami girl, justice for Marianne or Anne Marie, whatever her name is. It's one of those, but... I feel bad for her. Like, she must have so much, like, secondhand trauma, like, PTSD from all this. I'm sure this has to affect her some way. I feel bad for her. And look, we see Ariana back then, nine years ago. Don't tell my boyfriend to shut the fuck up. She stood up for him even knowing that he had sex with her. And Andy's like, so why, what, what's the difference? He's like, I don't really know. I just, you know, hadn't been single. I wanted to feel single. Dude, I think you have been acting and living like you're single your entire life. I don't think you've ever acted like you're in a committed relationship. So Ariana says she knew about Miami Girl. And Andy asks, why were you willing to forgive Tom for that? She said, well, we were not really exclusive at that time. And I saw the rest of my life with this person. And I wanted everyone to see the best in him because that's what I saw at the time. Then Sandoval tries to go into, yeah, and then Kristen tries to go on this campaign and everyone just shuts it down like, shut up, what are you talking about? And they're like, that was eight years ago. And they're like, what? then why are we bringing up? They're like, because you're the same person, 42 years old. And his logic that he was, like, spitting out, jumbling, like, he doesn't even know how to, he doesn't, he can't form a complete sentence and speak properly because he's so caught up in his lies, he doesn't even know what to say. But Lala's like, oh, yeah, you don't fuck your friend, you don't fuck the best friend, but when you're in a committed relationship, life partners, then we fuck the best friend. Um, so Andy changes the subject. They go into how, you know, before Scandival, there were three seismic breakups in this group. Lala and Randall, James and Raquel, 
and Katie and Schwartz. And he starts asking Katie, you know, like, what led to that or whatever. And she's like, really? I just took a look at my life and realized that he prioritized literally everything before me. And he's like, not out of necessity or whatever. And she's like, I just realized that I had to make a choice that I didn't want to have to make. And then he starts saying, like, and I... My sympathy goes out to Schwartz and his family. He said, you know, he almost lost his father and his brother had cancer. Um, but, you know, that aside, he they start asking, like, what you said you wouldn't hook up with anyone in the friend group. And Katie explained herself. She's like, you know, we just went from, like, being married to being friends, and that was just something that I needed at that time. And Tom even says... It was perfectly reasonable. However, just for the record, you were hooking up and having sex with people. See, this is where I'm going to go back to that Netflix apologies episode of Explained. You can't, like, you can't say, yeah, that's perfectly reasonable, but, and like, I don't know, just, I don't like his arguing, (laughs) his arguing skills. I don't know if you would even call them skills, but, you know, she was saying like, oh, you could have done the same or whatever. And he's like, it seems tenuous. I looked up that word and it means weak. And I'm like, what? How is he saying that's tenuous? And I feel like he just uses these words. He uses like a mutation in regards to their design of Schwartz and Sandys at one point. I'm like, why don't you just say it changed? Mutate? He's just, he does this to try to like mess with people, I think. And then he goes, oh, the friend code is a little murky to me. If you don't understand the terms, don't make the agreement. Don't sign the paper. I mean, obviously there's no like actual paper, but like don't make a verbal agreement with someone if you don't know what all the terms are, period. So then she reminds him, you know, they were, he was cheating anyways. Um, then he tries to give an example like, oh, if, it, if the roles were reversed and you made out with Peter in Mexico, <laughs> Ariana's face is so good. She's like, oh, you don't have a leg to stand on, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, darling, you're not a victim in this. He goes, I'm telling you there's a double standard. I want to know what you guys think because I think Schwartz is just a wussy pussy and I can't stand that he's really the only reason he's trying to go to bat on this is because it protects his friend his true gross lover Tom Sandoval I think it's gross um so then Andy goes Sandoval what do you think of that rule which is obviously a silly question because we all know that he doesn't care and they that's when they all jump in like oh you think it's perfect perfectly fine to go fuck your you know your friends girlfriends or whatever and he says doesn't mean that I think it's appropriate and then at one point I think I cut it out but there was um they cut to Raquel and she's just like which is kind of weird, weird, I guess, from her standpoint. I don't know. I, I'm dying to hear from her right now. But he did apologize for, um, he goes, I'm sorry that I did that in Mexico. But, see, that's when you negate. Don't even apologize if you're going to negate it. Just don't apologize. He goes, for some reason, that kiss was somehow liberating. They cut to Raquel and she's, smirking gross and then Lala's like but how sick is it that you felt that way and her the whole time was fucking your best friend and Santa was like not the whole time they're like it's sick he goes it happened one time and then it didn't happen and everyone's like it doesn't matter and he's like yes it does matter they're like it changed your relationship relationship he says a one night stand is a lot different than an ongoing thing and even Lisa's like, and then your best friend is making out with her. There's something strange about that. And he's like, I don't think so. Like, he really doesn't get it. So then Andy goes, you know, this is a group of cheaters. And he goes down the line. The only people who haven't cheated on the show are Katie and Lisa Vanderpump. 
And he's like, what's the difference? And Lala goes, I'll tell you real quick. None of us were fucking our best friend's man. And Andy's like, okay. I'll accept that. Then he asked Katie, like, would you be friends with Schwartz? And she's like, no, there's just things you need, like honesty, respect, loyalty, integrity. These are all beautiful things, I think, for any kind of friendship, relationship, to have those things. These are good qualities, right? And she says, those are things I look for in friends. And he goes, his response is, so if I don't abide by all your terms, we can't be friends? Um, yes, that is absolutely correct. If you cannot maintain these standards of being honest, respectful, loyal, and have integrity, then I don't want you as my friend. What's wrong with saying that? He's like so mad. Like, oh my God, I have to have honest, I have to be honest and loyal and respectful and have integrity. Like, oh my God, Katie's such an awful person for setting that as her standard. It's ridiculous. It's like, what about me? What about my terms? Like, then play over there. Don't come over here. Stay over there. And if I want to come over there to your circle and play, then I need to abide by your terms. Right? This is how the world works. So crazy. What about my feelings? Well, I think it was Lala. She's like, it's called setting a boundary. <laughs> or maybe Katie said that. And if you can can't respect the boundary, then you have to deal with the repercussions. Yeah, I think it was Lala. Then James jumps in and is like, you're a man, she's a woman. Like, that's the least you could do out of respect. And then <laughs> Schwartz goes, that's sexist. Like, <gasps> how is that sexist? What are you talking about? But anyways, then they go into Joe, Tom Schwartz's friend slash roommate slash situationship, whatever you want to call her. He says it, it was a situationship or like a friends with benefits thing. We clearly defined boundaries. We were both coming out of long-term relationships. And for a minute there, we were happy. We were each other's happy place. And they look at Katie and they're like, what do you think? And she goes, Joe is a creep. <laughs> Oh, my God. Tom goes, no, she's not. So right away, he sticks up for Joe like that. When she, Katie's like, Joe's a creep. And he goes, don't disparage her. And Katie goes, no one likes Joe. <gasps> oh, my God. This show makes me laugh. This pissed me off. So he's so quick. We've never seen him stick up for Katie this way. But right away, he's on top of it with Joe, this person that, like, he doesn't even really care about. And he's like, if you keep this up, you're going to get a cease and desist. Excuse me? Let me write down all the times that he should have done this for Katie Maloney, his wife. Jesus. This man. He goes, you're going to get a cease and desist for attacking her in the comments, too. <laughs> oh, my God. I remember when this comment came out from Katie. She wrote, Joe is spooky. I mean, none of us could stand to be around her. Her energy is on par with a crackhead. She is a psycho, and I will also light her on fire with Rachel. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was funny. She's like, I could say whatever I want. And he goes, you're a troll, little hermit. Wah. And then James sticks up for Katie. I'm loving the James-Katie duo. I want them to be best friends. But he goes, that's mean. That's mean to Schwartz. And he go, and he's like, that was fucking rude. And he goes, she's a comment troll. And he goes, that was mean. That was mean. And Schwartz goes, yeah. Oh, shut the fuck up, James. But he said, he, ugh, I, I can't stand Schwartz. So then they asked about Joe, was she in your friend group? And Katie said, by proxy, because she was best friends with Kristen Doty, but then she blocked Kristen's number the day she moved in with Schwartz. That's fucking weird. Then Andy asked, did you go on double dates with Joe and Sandoval and Raquel? And he's like, I did not. 
And they're like, you went to Big Bear. And they showed the pictures because all of our Instagram sleuths and Twitter sleuths, we found out they definitely did like a couple's trip to Big Bear. And Schwartz is adamant. He's like, it wasn't, it wasn't Tom, Tom. Like he's trying to get Tom to stick up for him. And Tom's not saying a goddamn word. This is when you, you know what? I almost feel like they need to go to jail for like one day. I bet if they went to jail for one day in like a Beyond Scared Street program or something, Tom would probably turn on, or Schwartz would probably turn on Sandoval because the minute they would get in there, I guarantee Sandoval would throw Schwartz into the wolves and be like, someone's bitch. Until he could figure out how to be like the number one guy in the group. Talking about this pretend jail scenario. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he look at he's like, tell them, tell them. This is so pathetic. And Ariana goes, Why wasn't I invited then? You told me it was a guy's thing. Mm-hmm. So then James is like, cause she only came to suck Senevo's dick. <laughs> Shane is just like, whoop. Oh, my gosh. And they're just yelling at him, you creepers. And they're all going, boo, shame. Boo, boo, shame. Oh, my God. I loved it. I loved it. Boo. <laughs> I love James Kennedy. So then Andy goes into Shorts and Sandy's. He's like, so Tom and Tom, we saw you secure the space for Shorts and Sandy's last season. We thought that, you know, this season we would actually see the restaurant open. I didn't even realize, like, wow, they really did. They got the place in season nine. All of season 10, it wasn't officially open. That's, like, kind of ridiculous, honestly. And he goes, so at that Daily Mail party, and they said they thought by the end of August. And he goes, oh, yeah, and that was naive. And when did you wind up opening? November 2nd. Okay. If you guys have never worked with a project manager, I'm just going to break this down for you really, really quick. So if you are ever going to do a project, this could be for anything. Work, family, whatever. You could use a project manager because a project manager is trained to know how to handle a project from beginning to end, to stay on budget, to mitigate any risk issues, deliver all communication to all stakeholders. The project manager is the number one, has knows what's going on at all times and helps coordinate to make things more efficient, more cost effective, and to save time and money. So they clearly didn't have one. If they had one, they would have had a hard open date. That would have been in the project plan. So all that money they wasted on rent could have went to a project manager who would have been able to turn around and save them thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that they wasted on rent. That's just my little spiel so that Anyone who's in a similar situation, just let me know if you need help. <laughs> Program manager expert. So anyways, they did say, they started talking about the food and like, you know, Sandoval blamed Greg for pulling the e-brake whenever they're trying to like do something. And, um, you know, they, Andy was like, why don't you just like start with small stuff? And like the food seemed to be like holding you guys back and, they talk about the food. I guess it does look good. Um, and even Lala was like, the food is good. But then they cut to Tom with his white fingernails saying, um, you know, we wanted to, Schwartz and Sandy so that we had something that was like, you know, without being under Lisa Vanderpump. And she starts going like, I've done everything. I've given you 5% of Tom Tom. They already took out like 50K each. And still own 5%, which I don't think is normal practice. Um, but then they talk about how, you know, after Scandival happened, you know, revenue was down for Schwartz and Sandys. And there was a boycott Schwartz and Sandys thing. Some of the reviews say, have Lisa take over your restaurant or close your doors. Don't go here, Team Ariana. 
found a cockroach in my pasta. Hashtag not about the pasta. <laughs> Red Lobster has better decor. A disgrace to the strip mall that it lives in. Burn this place down. Collect the insurance. Give it to Ariana. Oh, my gosh. Y'all are wild. I wouldn't do something like this. But yesterday on yesterday's live stream, I went through. Uh, Ryan Bailey had, um, I guess he had reached out to Yelp to ask about what happens in these scenarios and um it's all on his instagram you can go find it but i read through it yesterday on yesterday's show it was so funny um so yeah people are writing like team ariana on the tip line there's graffiti in the bathroom saying team ariana and fuck tom but then Andy goes into asking Ariana, okay, so um, you've said before that you maintain that anyone who has a relationship with Sandoval, that you will stop speaking to or whatever. Will you stop speaking to Lisa? She says, we just won't be as close. And that's when Lisa's like, well, hold on a second. What do you expect me to do? And she's like, I don't expect anything of anyone. And I really don't think Ariana was trying to like, I don't think there was any drama here. I think maybe the way that they edited the scenes they try to make it seem like it was something but she's basically saying like i just won't go there like i'm not gonna hang out there anymore which yeah, i wouldn't either and to be honest if i was lisa i would get rid of the toms rebrand tom tom just flip it and do something else like i think it's a lost cause and i think they need to work on rebuilding their own brand and maybe they need to do that separately that's what I would advise. I mean, I wouldn't want to have anything to do with Tom Sandoval at all. He's clearly bad with money. And then also, I'm thinking maybe we should get John Taffer up in here from Bar Rescue and get whip them into shape. Like, this is ridiculous. Um. So anyway, I'm just going to skip over this because I'm sure you guys all saw this, but... Yeah, I didn't think it was anything that big of a deal. Um, then they talk about something about her, and they're talking about how, you know, they haven't opened yet. It was March at the time of the filming. They said at that time they think by the end of May that they may be open. And then he, Andy mentions, mentions how they started selling merch. And they made, she, they said, about $200,000 just on merch. I don't know if that's, like, gross revenue or if that's profit i would be surprised if it's profit but um it's really incredible that so many uh, maybe it is profit no way i need to know now um it's so fun okay so then they say they made two hundred thousand. then they cut to the toms and look at their faces you bunch of wussy pussies ugh poetic justice um, but then, oh, Ariana's like, I brought you some merch, Andy, so you can replace that trash merch you got on Watch What Happens Live, and then they cut to Raquel giving the Tom Tom sweatshirt. And I didn't know this before the reunion, but uh, apparently that's Tom Sandoval's design specifically. They're not allowed to sell it at Tom Tom. So this is his own merch or whatever. And it's the one that Raquel wore at BravoCon, which Sandoval also wore as his Halloween costume. I am not forgetting about that. So, um, <laughs> then they go into Lala and Shayna being friends, how they weren't really good friends last season, but now Lala bought a house next to Shayna. And then Schwartz tries to, out of nowhere, goes, like, throws in that Katie told him that he didn't feel like, you know, that she was getting the same level of loyalty from Lala. And then, I don't know, which I thought was so, like, unnecessary. And it just goes to show more proof of how grimy Schwartz is towards Katie. Like, why do you have to add that in at this moment? He's he's like something about him like makes him constantly be against her. It's irritating. Like 
leave her alone. <laughs> Let her live. Anyways, so then they go, then he focuses on Shayna and he said, you know, Andy says, do you feel differently about encouraging Raquel to hook up with Schwartz? She says a million percent. She starts to get teary eyed. Raquel's kind of like rolling her eyes and Shayna's adamant about Raquel not being the person that she thought she was and how she painted, Raquel painted Katie out to be a totally different person than what she saw, what Shayna saw watching you know, the episodes back and then, you know, in in great staying on brand fashion, Shayna takes it back to herself and says, you know, this took me back to a place where I had been bullied by Katie and Lala in this group or whatever. And then I like this part because Lala is like, can I just say something? The word bully, we ain't teaching pre-K here, which is annoying that she talks like that. But she goes, OK, this is fucking bravo. We all signed up for it. Ain't nobody bullying anybody. Sandoval's like, bullying is not an age thing. <laughs> Lala just goes, please fuck off, Mr. I fuck my friend behind my... He's like, oh, is that your get out of jail free card? She's like, no. It's called I don't give a fuck what you have to say because I think you're a piece of shit. And James is like, it just means, it just means they're talking. <laughs> I think you should shut the fuck up, Lala says. She goes, I think you've always triggered me, and so has she. By the way, if you want to play a drinking game for this episode, scapegoat, 37 restaurants, and 40 years of marriage. Those are your three drinking game triggers or whatever. <laughs> but then he starts saying to Lala, like, you use her as a scapegoat not to go to wedding events. And I don't know why he's even talking about that but she calls you know Raquel a snake she goes I could smell that shit the second you stepped in here I knew you were capable of this shit you move like a snake he says takes one to no one I guess and James goes a worm a worm and I just want to say this is where we cut to he's a cold hearted snake we have to come up with that that flash mob choreography guys so I'm still waiting for people to send me videos because like 90% of you said that you can dance, but I haven't got anything yet. So I'm just messing with you guys. Anyways, I love this. Boo. I'm not normally like this, but with Scandal, yes, boo, boo this man. And this one I didn't get. Tom Sandoval's like, oh, I'm Lala. I fart Mozart, everybody. What the hell does that mean? Whatever. Then Lisa starts sticking up for Tom. And he's like, she's like, Lala, sometimes you've been pretty aggressive. And they're all like, you got to stop. Do not defend him. You're sticking up for Tom too much. She's like, I'm not. No, that ain't true. And James just loses it. He goes, he just gets up and goes, I'm not going to listen to this shit. And then... <laughs> We get to scenes for next week. So on next week's part two, um, James says, her mom would talk about my penis size. I don't know what that's all about. I think they're talking about Raquel's mom. Um, Schwartz says about Katie, she has a long history of dimin diminishing my friendships. And she's like, you're like a serial killer's wet dream. And then at one point, Sandoval must have said, I just talked to her. And she's like, I just talked to her. Oh, you're co coaching her or whatever. He goes, I'm not coaching anybody. And then at one point, Shana's like really crying. And, and Lala's like, this is like really taking a toll on her. And then um, Andy, I think this is just like a teaser clip for the preview. But he said, you said you trusted your husband in bed with her. I think they're trying to bring up this Brock thing. But I'm not, I don't want to believe it. I really don't want to believe that Brock ever cheated on Sheena because I want to believe that Brock is the guy that we're seeing on the screen. He better not be like a Sandoval or Randall. Oh my gosh, I'll be so mad. Anyways, uh, Tom goes to Raquel. Ariana's going to unleash on you. Don't you find it a little bit strange that he is so willing to be like open about, oh, Shayna said, I'm going to, I punched that bitch. And, oh, Katie called you a whore. And Ariana's going to unleash on you. Like, something about him just feels 
there's something off about him and how he's like almost getting off on like this person that who has my back is going to get attacked because of me. Like there's some kind of weird ego thing happening where I really feel like he enjoys this fighting or whatever. I don't know. That's just what my thoughts were. But then she comes walking in. Um, Andy asks, how did you envision this was going to play out with Ariana? Did you think that there was a path forward for the two of you? Then she just sits down. Hi, Andy. Oh, my God, guys. I don't know. She walks out as if she's like in a pageant. It's kind of weird. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to share my stories, real, or not my stories, my Instagram real quick. Because we have the uncensored pumped up edition still. And I'm going to try to go through these quick because we're running out of time. But what's this scene? Oh, so Ariana, they're talking about, like, what's the living situation? Tom's in the guest room. They have go-betweens who, like, coordinate so they don't run into each other so that, you know, they can each use a gym and things like that. But one thing that was so – I heard this before, but I didn't hear it on, like, in this setting yet. Apparently, Tom would refuse to, like, give a heads up on when he was coming and going, and then he also would yell – at everybody, her whole support system, when he would come to the house. That's insane. So then this one, uh, <clears throat> what's this one? Actually, maybe I should take it out and you can listen to it. Shoot. I had to reopen it. Sorry, guys. I don't like dead air. Okay. Sandoval, you are still living in the house that you and I oh, yeah, are. I, so I saw a couple conversations that you and Tom had in the later episode. After he was fucking of, other people. Mm -hmm. Of yep. the season. And After before, he, yeah. we knew, oh. yeah. before I knew he was fucking other people. So in this scene, he... Andy asks, you know, did Tom talk to you about his feelings about you w enjoying hanging out with your other friends more or whatever? And she goes, oh, yeah, when he berated me for 45 minutes off camera the night before. Write that down. Write that down in your Scandival notebook. So this next scene, let me see. I saw a couple comments oh. you would have told her if she hadn't discovered it. I actually had a therapy session with my therapist, <laughs> and we Good had basically shit. planned on that following Tuesday because we were to fully wrap filming and fully wrapped interviews so she wouldn't have to go in the interviews and be like, oh, like, we're here for the sandwich shop and talk about that when, the, like, this had just been told to her. He's just talking in circles again. He, first of all, obviously you had a therapy session with a therapist. You, oh, D. But I don't think he had any intention of breaking up with her. And I wonder what his therapist thinks knowing that he was cheating and he was not telling his girlfriend. Like, yikes. So you were thing? seeing similarities in the way that Sandoval was acting with Raquel and how he acted with Ariana back when he was dating Kristen. What are those similarities? I just felt that he was talking about Raquel and it was similar to the way that he would talk about Did Ariana. You know? So then Lisa's like, did you know them back then? And she goes, no, it's called a television. And then they're like, so they're trying to discount what Lala said. But then Ariana said, she comes in, she goes, well, I was there and I remember. And he loved that, you know, I could stay up all night and, you know, just get drunk and do mushrooms and hang out with Schwartz. And I was so cool and fun. And when he said that, you know, when she asked about why he didn't break up with Kristen after the Jax and Kristen thing came out. He said, oh, her grandpa just died and, you know, 
making excuses. Oh, we had tickets to some event. This is a pattern, guys. This is a pattern. Of, of Schwartz and Katie's relationship. Uh, you married them. Katie and Tom, it is with a full heart. I'm skipping this one. I was, I'm sad. I was sad about Katie and Schwartz breaking up, but after this season, I wish she never married him, and I think he's a wussy pussy. This one I need to talk about, though. This man is a Coachella predator. Okay. Forever said that. A one night stand is a lot different than an ongoing thing. It doesn't matter. Thing. It changes okay. the whole relationship. Right. And then your best friend is making out with her. There's something strange about that. <laughs> <laughs> one night stand is a lot He's a liar. The one night stand that you planted the seed for in the hot tub at fucking Coachella. Yeah. You fucking piece of fucking shit. Apparently in April, she told this person. So in April, their mutual friend, I guess Raquel told their mutual friend that Tom made a comment when they were in the hot tub together at Coachella that he said they're in an open relationship. And Ariana's like, oh, hell no. That's never been the case. And he's like, what are you talking about? And Sheena's like, Andy, please ask her when she comes out because obviously I can't. And he, he's like, she didn't say that. She didn't say that. And Ariana's like, how would you know what she said? Oh, because you've been coaching her. He's like, I'm not coaching anyone. He's such a liar. He is a Coachella predator. He needs to be banned for life. Um, what's this one? Let's see. My relationship with Ali, she's the boss. Ah, so James, James is arguing with Lisa and saying like, I do what Ali wants because we're in a good relationship. I love her and I want to make her happy. And she's like, I don't know, somehow Schwartz butts in and starts talking about Satchel and um, poor Satchel gets dragged into the reunion, but he's got a new girlfriend, so everyone leave poor Satchel alone. <gasps> oh, man. That's it. That's it for today, guys. We have so much more to look forward to. I just... Oh, my gosh. Let me, let me check out the comments. Oh, my gosh. There's too many here. Braid person, then. Do you think Sandoval's braid person dumped him after Sandoval broke? <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, his braid person must be pissed. We need to fire or find them. Um, Let's see. I think the fire hydrant is Rachel, as if he thinks James is pissed because he played with his toy unless Rachel likes getting peed on. <laughs> Oh my gosh, her eyes were always a little lost. I couldn't tell if she was innocent or just empty up there. Sandoval, I could not understand the appeal either. Why did he always look so shiny? <laughs> These are so funny. But I got bad vibes the second Raquel showed up. Ooh, people did say that, I feel like. Um, let's see. I'm with Lala. Raquel has always triggered me. Smelled that rat from Florida. Uh, let's see. Lala and James have great chemistry. Oh, I want Taffer to make white nail polish cry. Oh, my God. We got to call him. We should write him a letter. Haha, ha, yes, Katie and James are becoming quite the duo. I love it. I've come so far, but James and Lala together are TV gold. Yes, I agree. James with anyone, really. Like, I, I think I just love James. But I also love Katie, so I like when they're teaming up together. I want to see Katie and Tom do people's couch for old VBR. Not Tom. Can we have Katie and James do it? That would be good. It's funny how the Toms think being a basic, considerate human is asking a lot. Right? She says, I want honesty, respect, loyalty, integrity. What is so difficult about that? Like, oh my God, you're such a bitch, Katie. Like, how dare you expect respect, loyalty? I mean, not that she expects it, but those are things that I think in any relationship, those should be standards for us all. Please. PSA, people. I walk away when someone tries to apologize to me, but adds a but. Yep, I'm going to. I'm done 
don't continue. Yeah. Don't say but. Don't say but. Schwartz apologized with a but equals just like Sandoval does. Yep. Katie, I'm sorry I did that, but somehow that kiss was liberating. He can't ever give her one. Nope. If Ariana apologized to my Miami girl, I would respect the heck out of that. Oh, that would be interesting. I wish Stassi had made an appearance. I wonder if Stassi would go back on. I don't, I don't follow her that closely. This is the moment when Schwartz is tired of lying for Sandoval. Yeah, I think we saw that. Sandoval saying James and he weren't friends after paying for Richella proves he does everything for the camera and to look like a good guy. Yes! Yes, Sherry. Okay, Winter House ended on March 20th. Okay, so either way, Shorts is going to be on and we get to see. I hope they talk about Scannable the entire time. Um, let's see, because he wanted to lay out his plan that he wanted to break up because Ariana was a problem. Yep. Lisa doesn't support other women. Yeah, we need to, we need to talk to her. Lisa even said Rachel being up for it was too much for him to, re to resist. Come on, we are not animals. He can't help it. He's a man is not an excuse. You hear me? Dorinda energy. You hear me? I love that gif of her. Oh my gosh, we need Dorinda up in here. Ew, but Katoli said, I was thinking more along the lines of her closing a bunch of her businesses, not just Pomp. I don't know what that means, but uh, I think she knew but didn't know what to do with it. Production said the cast needs to watch all three parts before signing because they may need a break. So the, re the reveal has to be something one filmed away from where they are sitting. Yeah, the, I think that's going to be Raquel. Oh my gosh, someone, someone said, I think the reveal has to do with Lisa. Oh my gosh. Do any of you believe the rumor that Raquel broke off the engagement to pursue Sandoval? I believe it. <laughs> Winter Mermaid's here. Hi, I love you. Um, oh my gosh, Kristen Ortiz. Yes. We're going to go into withdrawals after last reunion episode. We are not going to go into withdrawals because, like I said, I have episodes that I'm starting to line up when I take a break, because I have to take a break after Scandaval. Um, but we're going to talk about Scandaval in more depth. We're going to have a, an expert on narcissism. So we'll get to hear from her. I'm really excited to have her on. And I don't know. I hope I don't have to do two episodes next week, but I might have to. So make sure you guys are tuning in. Um, wait, one more comment feel like new Bravo fans are being spoiled because we don't normally get this much content. Yeah, new Bravo fans, you need to catch up. But lucky for you, we got you. So <laughs> I just want to thank everyone for joining today. Today was a lot of fun. It was different because we had like a different format, but we needed it. It's game time. This is our Mount Everest, y'all. This is a marathon, not a sprint. We got a lot of things we still got to do. And don't forget, I'm going to be on, on site in the battlefield for part three of the reunion at the watch party in New York City. If you're going, let me know. Um... And if you're still listening, happy Memorial Day weekend. And we will see you all in June. Thank you for joining. Make sure to follow, subscribe, turn on notifications so you can be updated when we go live for Bravo and Blaze. Again, subscribing, reviewing, sharing, liking, and leaving a five-star rating is incredibly appreciated and helps the show conti to continue to grow. See you next time. Bye.